guys, Runbuck with Runbuck on Games. We got another war recap for you this time from ZX Stars, looks like. Um, the tears in my eyes that you see could either A, be because we lost, as you see here, 7980, or the fact that I'm waking up. You make the decision. Um, you ever had that where you feel like you slept really well, then you get up and you walk around, then you're just like, ooh. I'm in one of those states, but you don't care. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the attacks here that were voted on. It was a great war. I mean, if I was going to comment on the overall, I mean, we had the opportunity to win. We were kind of outnumbered, as you see here. The We had put two extra Town Hall 11s, and you know my theories on that. So it was a difficult headwind, and, and uh, as you can see, we struggled um, to get the two closes, which would have given us a win, or even get a couple. I think we missed one of our nukes, we meaning I, because that's royal we. But, uh, you know, I'll take the full blame because I know my, I had two attacks that I could have done better to uh, get us to 81. But let's look at an attack. Uh, the highest vote getter is Slim Shady. So let's take a look at what happened down here and then figure out why it worked. A um, lot of different comments. He had six different people voting for him on this. And I forgot to look up the fresh hit ratio. So maybe we'll take a gander at that at the end of the video. Uh, but I forgot to take a look before I started this. But all right, here we go. So it looks like it's going to be one of those attacks we've been seeing a lot of, which is the 4Q open with then the 2Go Wee Wiz with the Royal Suicide going in to get the two AEDs, right? See how that's all happening and flowing out? And gets in pretty tight. So again, it's that whole recognition of the 4Q giving you access to the two ADs plus the Queen plus the CC seems to really enable the attack. And the other thing notice is he got both of the uh, air sweepers down. So, it, oh, I lied. There's one. But he got one of the air sweepers down. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, but yeah, so he doesn't even really need his, uh, what's he got? He's got one loon left, holds one loon to the very end, uh, which is wise, because look how, at this point, he's pretty grouped. So this could be an issue for his team overall. So he uses one loon to do kind of the pathing once the defense is dropped, not before, because if he dropped it early, it would get offline. But now he knows that he can have this loon just work in this edge pattern, and then his density of where his queen is and his other stuff can work this outer edge. Now, I don't know. Let's take a look at the time uh, that I actually finished this finished in. Hurry up, Queenie. You're not going to be part of the party. Oh, she's back there all by herself. She probably just didn't want to risk running into a bomb. She's just hanging out back there. She's like, I'll just shoot this wall. You guys take care of the rest. Let's take a look at the time. And then look at the base and see why it was enabled for that, why he went that way. Okay, so he had 18 seconds. So really not as critical to do that. But I think it's a good, kind of like, you know, it's good practice to hold like two wizards and some minions and some attacks to clear out clutter at the end. To hold a couple loons or one loon to run a certain segment once all defenses are down makes a lot of good sense. But let's look at what... So I think what he's seeing here is, again, the the 4Q clearing this line of walls, and then this whole box is opened off of a wall break. And then he can get all this plus that plus this, and the king would come too, so he would go down as well. This will go down because it's on the walk-in. Not a concern, not a concern. Maybe we'd get this as far as the whiz tower. Expos are up. So it wasn't a give me. But, you know, the other thing to notice is he didn't have, he does have nice density here, right? So he knows that if he can push in this way, I'm assuming he pushed in from that side, that he'll very quickly get the three core things that are driving the defense down. So you can have a nice condensed push. That might be another thing to think about is, you know, if you can get two ADs, Expo, AS, Queen, CC in the in the two-go whiz Royal Suicide, if you can do that, um, might want to look at the density of how tight your attack can be. Because I think a tighter one on the push is going to help you because then you can spread out to the lower risk items which is what ended up happening, right? We had two main flank teams going. But either way, nice attack and nice recognition. And I like how the clan as a whole is really starting to pick up on Wu Boy 
uh, who originally started doing that, oh, I'd say about a month or so back, started doing it a lot or having success with it at least. The next uh, big vote winner was, yep, yep, yep. It looks like it's going to be a Town Hall 9 show. Usually is when we lose, right? Because that means somebody up top didn't do their job. <laughs> but uh, here's Yep. Our thinker. Yep always takes a lot of time pondering his attacks and then produces, so you can't really complain about it. Two times speed. What do we got here? We got a nice cut going on. Getting a freebie out of some minions. Queen walks pushing in. He can't really get the ADs, so... Looks like a Valk. Okay, so he's just clearing clutter, getting that finger established. Nice finger. Look at that. Look at that finger. I'm assuming that's where he's coming from. Little hog trigger to get the the hog trigger once the queen was in to get him to go was also nice because if you look at the radius, right? So it had to be a very delayed trigger. So kind of looking forward and thinking about it as expected. Here comes the Valks on that finger they had cut with the two flanks, the one that was more of a table cut pretty deep and then the outer cut was more minions uh, just one jump and then the Valks have to break through one wall now this is a little concerning this guy right here I don't think you could plant with Valks it's kind of a wonky patterning I haven't been able to like forecast Valk padding too far past into the, into the base you kind of have a guess on some initial wall penetration where that's going to be like the secondary wall that breaks through but I guess it didn't matter, especially with the queen still up and the healers. So maybe that, let's take a look at if he could forecast from that attack pattern. Could he forecast the queen staying up and, and surviving late in the round? So he knew, he knew going in that this part would be successful. He'd have a nice cut there. And then clearly he knew he was going to wall break because he saw that CC trigger. So he's doing a table cut uh, here, right? So he's saying, I'm going to get just deep and then that gives him his knight line through the throat which also kind of lines him into the two core expos right so it's just a really nice thinking of you know table cut and just an edge cut with two minions that kind of drive him through but could he have uh, what was my question again my question was expo left the queen yeah, that worked pretty well. And he got the queen on the outside, so that was nice. And just one jump. Did he do the one jump here? I think he did. Yeah, because then the queen had cleared this, so he would know that jump would keep him on path, and he didn't have to walk two walls. Hmm. So my only concern would be is that they would, I guess the density of the pole, that they would jump because of this, they would jump through here and then break through and get to this guy. Hmm. Did he have, let's ask ourselves a question, could he have done, so like he could look at it and say, could I do that uh, attack that Slim Shady did? Could you have instead of, instead of just thinking Valk, which, you know, I guess the look for Valk is can I table and then do an edge cut and get a nice finger of the base kind of standing there that I can run with the queen. Oh, that was the question I had. Would we know the queen would survive? There's a little concern there because clearly it's both set back. The queen will come in. He was clearly planning on coming into this, and he. And I remember the hog was bouncing on this, so he had to have looked at it and said, if he drops his healers here, it's kind of like when you do hijibo, the hgb H -G -H attack, where you plan the not so much the flow of the giants, but rather the healers trailing behind them. The same question on the queen walk sometimes, is if you penetrate here, she's going to walk in, and then shift in this way because she can't, she might even go like this, like a swinging motion. But the healers will typically be trailing right behind her. And you can see that the big concern is you want to keep her away from that. So if she did go for the AD, then she's safe. She'll get that first. And so it's just a nice recognition of the queen surviving through, I think, would be a good question to add to, you know, this Valk finger move. The Valk finger. The Valk flip off, shall we call it? <laughs> you know, I'm just going to make, I just like making up names that mean, mean something to me. And so a Valk running around with, with giving the, giving the, flying the bird, I think is a far better image of the base, right? So it means something. It's funny. 
Uh, let's see. So that was Yip and Shady. Last one of full speed would be Alistair Crow. Haven't seen him in a couple episodes. What are you up to, Mr. Crowl? Alistair Crowl. What are you going to do? Hmm. Looks like another Valk attack, but with a little bit heavier push in. Look at that. Two go whiz. With a. Oh, interesting. The Tavabo. Oh, interesting. Okay. Don't see that as often. Works really well for him. Has a little bit of separation. Loses. But with that much meat shield, he guarantees that his uh, Valk team survives as well as his queen. Well, I don't know about guaranteeing the queen, but the Valks, with two golems, the Valks, the king, you're, it's rather ran, his entry point was random in terms of the bowlers have a tendency to spread, but he probably, you know, there's good odds that his stuff would spread out with it. Uh, so he'd have, a, he'd have a meat shield in front of, like, the one bowler to go one way, and, you know, if the other bowler went this way kind of deal. But let's look at it again for that Bobo. Why did he feel... Question I would have here is like, as he looks at that base, why would he say, you know what, I need two golems for this? He does have a lot of pressure early in the early in the attack. So as he moves into that, that's his penetration point. He's going to be facing both expos of the base, which is good and bad, right? He's going to tie up both expos, meaning they're not shooting his core. The other thing you notice is look how really behind that initial heavy defensive front. He doesn't really have a lot of defensive range stuff in in range of him. So if he can get in there and just take out this really high value area, which is this, right? And then the Valks, and then know that his Valks will cut through there. I guess it wouldn't be horrible if they cut through here. But either way, the Valks will do his secondary cut. That's how he's getting into the base. Well, he has one jump. I think he uses his jump later in the attack. Let's, let me look at it real quick again. But I would say the core of what he saw here was this really dense value area that allows a two-go Vabo to uh, survive and penetrate, and then the bowlers push through to a much weaker side of the other other side of the base, or at least not as dense. Like It can be handled on a one-by-one -one basis. Let's look at where he used the... Four times speed now. I'm curious where he used. Or I'm trying to remember where he used the jump. I'm assuming it was with what troop he was enabling. Oh, it was right at the core. He didn't let the Valks do it. So I would question that. So is that critical? Because really, you know, granted, yeah, he got his stuff, but wouldn't it have been better to have his whole crew just uh, running this way, right, and letting the Valks lead the charge, and then then use the the jump later? I guess so. You get into the trouble of. You know, so what he avoids with that jump is with the spread of his team, he doesn't have a a flanking movement of his crew against a pretty still mature base, right? Where they're all they'd all be shooting this way. So I wonder if that's what he was worried about as he debated jumping or valk penetration on that secondary wall. Let's look at that again. Hmm. So if he would have, you know, so he's, first of all, can he, can you know that it would go for the expo? Valks are running in. I mean, if you're going with that, it's either this one, this one, or this one, or the three points the Valks are going to run at. One, two, one of those three areas. Um, the queen is back, so that might be a factor of where the Valks go. It's definitely a factor of where the king goes. Hmm. Oh, you do... The other question would be, like, would the queen just set behind that wall and give you a problem? And very possible. Look at the, uh, see how her range has that wizard tower? So she could definitely post up early and uh, just be behind this wall if your timing's not right. So there's a risk of the queen standing behind the wall. And if you went this way, that uh, she'd be flanking you the whole time. Plus, you got the expo flanking. You've got this cannon flanking. Nothing else, really. The king would come across. Hmm. Because, well, and it was in really, it's good value for the jump. He gets four, three boxes up. Better value than anything on the backside except for right here. I think it's a coin flip. 
whether or not to let the Valks make that initial break or to let the, although you could say they're under a lot of pressure. So you want to get them out and into the base. You don't want them banging on the wall for a period of time. So maybe that's the question. So if AC sees this, maybe he can comment on why he went with the jump early to enable the penetration versus letting the Valks handle it. Was it the high DPS and wanting to get the Valks deeper into the base quicker? Or was it the pathing where he was trying to avoid flanking and just having this high chunk of the base shooting him? Or was it just, you know, meh, whatever he felt like? Who knows? So there's the top three. Good tax by them. And the last but not least moment, a bonus round, four times speed. Who will we look at? Uh, we had a hit up by space that I could look at. The Town Hall 11 was a four two star that everybody thought was pretty awesome. We had a max attack on a Town Hall 9. We've done a lot of Town Hall 9, so let's skip that. Let's go ahead and go with space because uh, we've done three Town Hall 9s and the other votes are Town Hall 9s. So space, where are you, my friend? Especially considering we missed all of ours. So where is space? There he is on the lowest Town Hall 11. Hitting up to be Stone Cold Awesome. What do you got, Space? Oh, it's the baby dragon for the percentages. Which you would kind of wonder, right? Look at the ranges. Yeah, they're just barely out range of the uh, external wall. So he knows that the baby dragon will push, and then he just does the classic Valk wall breaker jump rage into core to take the town hall. Right underneath, and more importantly, he did it underneath the dragon, which a lot of people... And look at that percentage. That's a really high percentage for a Town Hall 10 hit-up. Now, granted, the base, not... I mean, it's at level 1 eagle, all that waiting to come in. fact, the, the, the uh, royals are strong, though. Those are 40-40. The guy didn't skimp there. But I think the more interesting is he knew that the... I think this is a... We'll go, I remember, I got to look at the, whether it's fresh hit or not. But the double freeze. So he broadsides the cannon, or the infernos, right into the base. And then his, and his Valks actually run the wrong direction. So his jump was a little too far over. I don't think he wanted that. I think he probably wished if he had to do it over, he could comment on whether or not he did it. When he shifted it over, I think he would. Um, to get his team more focused but it actually I think ended up giving him that percentage and his queen really does a good job but he ignores what's interesting to me is he ignored if he knew that the dragon was in there a lot of people would chicken out from that they would say well I don't want to send my Valks underneath the dragon fire we're gonna but it was definitely enough time so you if you can get in there in the secondary box uh, your Valk team under rage can definitely take the town hall after the baby dragon push and how many baby dragons do you have 12 so really nice uh, because of the ADs being set back enough to where they just barely, um, they just barely, see how they don't cover? Well, they do there, but they don't cover that edge. Just barely cover. So you know that you can get the first layer with the baby dragons. And look at the separation. Perfect separation of basically six tiles between each dragon. See how it's like two every two buildings? He has a two building gap. Let's go back and look at that again, because that's an it God forbid you deploy and then your baby dragons don't rage after all your thinking and pondering. Right? Let's let's stop right at that. So let's pause when he deploys and you can look at the uh, spacing. Alright, so there's like so there's the two I'm talking about. You got the nice rage. Now here's a five, but it's on an angle. Again, this is hard to read, but that would be about a five on an angle. Let's keep going. Okay, they're dying quick, so that's five. So we still got rage when it's on an angle with one bit, like a four or five building. But when they're side by side, notice how it's six. So on angle, maybe five on side on flats. I think you need six, but maybe Fred Ace wants to comment on if that's better or worse. He can. But a good attack either way. I mean, it got good percentage. Might question the jump positioning. Um, but I like the I like the stone cold ice in the veins. Let's go take on the dragon. Who cares? Kind of stat style. Let's look at the war details. As I promised, we'll take a look at the defenses. Uh, Slim Shady on 13 was the first one we looked at. That was a fresh hit. So bonus points to Slim for that. Nicely done. 
And then Yip's attack on 16 was, oh, wow, fifth fifth hit. So let me write that down. Jeez, fifth hit. We struggled on that base. Um, so I guess he gets he gets bonus points because finally somebody uh, got it down. Our, we put our student of the game on it. He studied all the replays probably. And then uh, the last one that we looked at was Alistair Kroll. His attack was a fresh hit. Very nice. And then the bonus round one was fresh hit, so he didn't know. So it wasn't he wasn't as brave as he was resilient will be his new title. Where is he at? On all space. There he is. Fresh hit. Nice job. So there you go. Hope it helps, guys. And uh, we'll get to our next war. I think we go to town, uh, level 11 on this next war coming up. Talk to you later. What am I going to do? My clan sucks. Hey, it's JTJ. Uh, I think that's an all-out attack. No, no. It's the legendary JTJU. JTJU. JT. This army. Download Clash of Clans for free. Then subscribe to JTJU and win.